Hello. Uh, hi, welcome everyone. Um, so, uh, I was asked to talk to you about action today. Nice introduction. We sometimes also have really nice looking work though. Uh, I don't know. Um, uh, let me start by properly introducing uh, myself uh, together with a bunch of guys. Um, I own a design company called Afdeling Buitgewone Zaken, which is uh, Department of Extraordinary Affairs, if you translate it uh, freely. Um, we're in the product, experience and service building um, business. It's in many shapes and forms. And we believe that all of us, especially we as designers, we have a, a, a certain degree of responsibility to, um, to create positive change. And we acknowledge that we, we need to create solutions that not only cut cost or uh, generate more profit, but it's also about uh, social, experiential, um, human value. Um, and I, I, I like to keep this in mind when I, when I design. Um, so this is in Eindhoven. This is a Christmas mar market for uh, grumpy elderly. I don't know if there's some old people here, but... Um, but it's to positively engage uh, people in their neighborhood. And we were asked by the municipality of Eindhoven, um, because this, this was a, a square, typical square. Um, I think it was in Wunzel. Um, and what happened there is there was a certain power structure, disbalance, oh, sorry, between um, the elderly that had apartments along the square and they were looking down upon the square and well, young people, uh, having fun at the square. So what the police did um, is they had an alcohol ban. Uh, you couldn't hang out with each other after 10. Um, so many strange things, like everything was poured into concrete, so they couldn't toss it. Um, and we were asked to change it, reframe the structure there. And we just, what we did was um, one day, one day, we, um, we just went there one night. We uh, rented a picnic uh, table, like this, this in front, uh, had a heater because it was the winter, and we just sat out there, and we just waited for people to come up to us and talk to us. And of course, there's these elderly, you know them, they look behind the curtain and look down upon you, and well, that took, us, took them two hours, until one guy, um, he was at the cafeteria, uh, he was buying french fries. He came outside because he had nothing to do and just talk, started talking to us. And we started talking to him. And he told us what he wanted to change about the square. And then suddenly more people came and they told us what they wanted to change about the square. And every, everybody, everybody wanted to change it in a better way and have social exchange. So we just started slowly. Uh, we had a telephone line. And that's, that's what the, you could call the square line. Um, you could call it, nobody called. So we uh, transformed it into a, a place you could just go to and ask questions. And then we had a bingo and a crisp, I don't know, it changed in within a week, it changed 20 times because they, if it doesn't work, you change it until it does work. And at the end we had a, you could uh, win a Christmas tree and it really worked well. Um, we also present full body personality scanners as real to explore the use of online personal information. This is during the Dutch Design Week, um, 2012, 11. Um, but this is really funny because some people, they can see through your theater shtick um, and they say uh, uh, nice and they play along or they don't and they just step out of the scanner. But some people, they are really fascinated by this online scanner or this scanner and personality scanner and they ask us hey did you scan my telephone and because um, they stood in the scanner and um, two minutes later we could tell them anything about themselves like uh, oh you play tennis you uh, this is your age this is your name while well, they didn't tell us anything but it's just because um, part of the theater play was that we Ask them to fill in a form. Do you have any uh, strange diseases? Are you pregnant or something? And we placed it in a box, but they didn't know that we scanned the box for their name and we had a camera on their face so we could link their online profiles together. And meanwhile, back in our studio, we were just uh, Facebooking, uh, Twittering, uh, Googling everything about them. 
so we could present that to them and then um, actually change it into a positive thing because we told them where to go during the Dutch Design Week. So if you like bicycles, you would go to the bamboo bike, I don't know. Um, so some people just read the coupon, oh yeah, let's go to the bamboo bike. And that's really strange because she's just standing in a personality scanner, but okay. Um, we dress up as a baker to develop new services for their um, perishing businesses. This is a really um, example case for us because it's so easy. Uh, there's ambachtelijke uh, bakeries like Jordi's bakeries that they're going really well. But this one is in, uh, I think, Rosmalen, and um, they have a really, uh, yeah, it's really difficult for them to still make profit. So how do you do this while still keeping your um, identity as a bakery? Um, we also, we, we prototype our way towards uh, uh, a company to, to change the way, this is a intercom system. Uh, it's one of our uh, small companies and actually, this was our, um, um, the guy we rent our studio from. He, he just came inside one day and he, he told us, um, I have this really good idea for intercom systems. Y you should change it. Um, and normally when someone says they have a good idea, they don't have a good idea. But this time he had a good idea. And we, uh, we just built it within one week because it's an intercom system, no wires needed because it's often like old buildings like this that they change into, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess many of you are in this kind of building, many studios in an old building. But you don't need to change anything and you just get a call on your cell phone and then when you can open it, while I'm here, I can open my door. So that's pretty cool. Um, we built it within one week, it was just the iPad on the wall and it got stolen within a week, so we had to change it. Um, we place voting boxes on an island to find out how an art festival influences a sense of place. So this is uh, at Uro, Terschelling. Um, and it's really funny because we quantify theater. So it's all about numbers. And these are people, you know, they have the same bike and the same jacket and we are trying to quantify everything. Um, so it's kind of, uh, uh, we're, sometimes we're fighting their uh, opinions. I don't know. Um, this is in Belgium. It's a small village and we run a pop-up delivery service um, to design a service for them for, for the small shops to, to profit from online sales. So um, um, you have to imagine that this is a village, like a really small village, maybe 50 people living there. And we, one day we just arrived there with a van and we um, have all these prototypes prepared and we set up camp in a hotel room and there we um, um, we have computers installed, so we're monitoring everything that happens. Where uh, uh, we have a nice map on the wall, where we uh, uh, we check what what people are uh, playing a role, so all the stakeholders. And at the same time, we just go into these shops, like a supermarket and a bakery and a, a butcher, and we um, ask them if they want to make use of our products. And it's a testing phase, so uh, you know it's a bit cheaper this this week. Okay, let's, let's do this. And so we install some uh, coupon printers uh, for orders. And actually from the hotel room, we're ordering all kinds of food. So all coupons come out and they're thinking, whoa, this village is really, it's really happening right now. Um, so we have a lot of food in our hotel room, but actually we're, we're testing the system, how it works. And if, if, if it doesn't work, because for example, at the butcher's office, it turned out that it's a really simple thing. Like, I can't handle all the coupons because my hands are dirty and I, you need to change it. So it's really small things that we need to tweak. Um, we also play um, old videos for uh, elderly homes to get demented uh, people uh, out of their daily habits to talk about different things. It's really useful for my grandma as well. Um, we sell uh, solar products in rural India to design uh, the energy networks of the future. And I'll, we'll tell a bit uh, about this later. Um, oh, that looks a bit strange. Um, I'm missing the font, I see now. I'd like to tell you a little story about um, uh, the meaning of what we do. 
And we were asked by the, the public library of uh, Breda. It was during the Graphic Design Festival. I think the Lope and the Bond was there as well. Um, what we asked, they were, well, they were asked to reimagine the future of the library, and so they asked us. Um, because, you know, public libraries, they're struggling to uh, keep up with social, economical changes. Um, and they're asked to re-identify themselves with these modern times. Um, so after uh, much debate, we, uh, we planted our version of uh, the information desk. It's right across their desk, their real desk. It's a sort of uh, standoff. And um, the way you can see, she's having lots of fun in the library. Um, but um, yeah, so we, we had no ordinary desk. So if you would come to, up to our desk, we would have a conversation with you um, like normal people do. Um, but the trick is that we would, uh, we would try to figure out what it is that you as a visitor in the library r really want or wish or need. And while we had our conversation, um, the rest of the crew behind me, um, they would create a small booklet for you uh, with information, tips and tricks, new perspectives. So, um, I mean, critical answers, we would call people while, we, while I had the conversation with you. Um, so we had this uh, graphic designers as well, was part of the, of the game. Um, and at one point there was a, a small queue at the real desk. And, um, I noticed it and a guy got in line and I asked him to come over to me. Um, and he, uh, he told me he wanted to end his uh, library subscription. Um, so the real desk, they, they would have asked his library ID, uh, looked up his ID on the computer, typed it in, hey, your, subscription, your subscription has uh, just ended. Um, but instead, I, 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 I just started the conversation with him about his uh, recently acquired books and I think we talked about, uh, talked about him being a DJ. And it turns out he um, rented only like really thick books, like the real heavy ones. Um, and he would dread starting to read those books every month, month after month, and would drag those heavy books back to the library again uh, without reading a word uh, of it. And well, this is, you know, this is kind of funny that someone does it. Um, but um, we, uh, after our conversation, I handed him his uh, booklet and one of the suggestions uh, being to check out the music magazines in the back. Um, so we saw him reading our booklet and he walked a bit around and then after a few minutes we saw him with a bunch of music magazines to the real desk uh, extending his library subscription. So this is... Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting, pretty, for us this is, this is the type of uh, quality, uh, well, sort of anecdotes or motivations that we do it for. Like, at that moment we know this desk is uh, for real, this desk is, is working. Um, but uh, the desk that we have, this is, by the way, a girl, she uh, went to uh, her si visitor sister in uh, Suriname and we gave her a booklet about I mean, 10 things to do with your sister, um, baking a cake or whatever. Um, but the desk that we have is, is, is a live prototype, so it's, it's a real experience. Um, but while we operate the prototype, we're constantly uh, tweaking it. So uh, we have to keep it as real as possible, but we're also, uh, we're, we as designers, we are the sensors. So we talk to people, they give us certain information besides just a regular conversation. Um, but we, we noticed that, oh, we need to, I don't know, it could be as simple as place the desk in a different direction, but it, it, if, it's, if it helps, then it helps. Um, so we have a, a certain design goal in mind and for the library. That this was uh, to change, well, it's less abstract than change the future of the library, but just find out what it, what it is that the library re really needs. So we are really sensitive to the, uh, to the attitudes and the behaviors of uh, people. And we're doing everything we can to, to adjust to, uh, to the design goal, but also to the wishes and the needs of these people. Um, and what we figured out is that before we start, we actually have no idea what people want. And to make it worse, these people don't know what they want. Um, so that's a real challenge. So we can assume, but we have no idea. Um, 
but I think a sort of lack of knowledge in any field can be like a, a sort of catalyst for learning. Um, you know, often companies or institutes, they're, they're stuck in their ways and you have to figure out um, um, how to dislearn everything you know, uh, be clueless, um, because I think it helps you uh, approaching your subject from a different angle. So what we sometimes do is we do a lot of research, but we also step away. Like there's a time for research, but there's also a time to step away from your research, research desk and just do things. So this is where action comes in. Um, we ask our questions by, uh, by letting uh, people experience our prototypes. So in a real context, in a real setting. Um, and so what we, we get in return is real attitudes, real behavior, real um, things that they do, real actions. Like, we sometimes say that um, if they use a prototype, if they don't use a prototype, we can throw it away or we need to change it. And if they do, then you know, everything is fine. Um, and, as, and as these people um, use our s prototypes or products or services, well, the system arises. Um, this is supposed to say the European design uh, challenge uh, something. Street design challenge. So it's a 48-hour uh, design contest, and it's focused on the idea of an, of an expo for the Paris region. Um, the, the, the challenge is to, to connect different social groups um, in the outskirts of Paris, so um, you know, a, a positive approach to, to a multicultural city. Um, and we also, we sometimes teach uh, design students, and what you see is that um, they're so worried to uh, to go out there, to have physical contact with people, well, not physical contact, but to have, have, have conversation, to just, just go out there, talk to local residents, and to show your shitty prototype. Like, it could be anything, it could be a paper model, but if you're afraid to show it to people, you will never get real feedback. Um, and it was no different during, uh, with, with the other contestants, and it, it's such a pity. I mean, we didn't win the competition, so we did something wrong, but at least we went out there and do something for the local people. I think there's, there's uh, real value in just talking to people. Um, so anyway, this is, um, after getting acquainted with the context, we, we just thought of a system uh, where residents could um, ask questions to each other, uh, in order to get more of a feel with a different area or even talking to people from different areas um, or from a different origin or social class. So um, we built it that night in our hotel room and it's, it's no more than a cardboard box with you know, some electronics inside, some Arduino, small printer, some buttons, whatever. Whatever feels real to the people. Um, well, this is... La réponse à votre question est le café que vous cherchez, c'est à la rue du Landy, l'auberge orientale, euh, 93-300 Auvergne. Donc je réponds, l'auberge orientale, 58 rue du Landy, 93-300 Auvergne, un café algérien. Merci. Y a-t-il une partie sur laquelle va s'engager dans d'autres quartiers C'est quoi la partie Une partie de désir. Une partie de Il y a le salon de Borger pour ce week-end, euh, au Borger, à la Saint-Saint-Denis, voilà. Salon, salon de l'aviation. Voilà. Merci. Um, so the, the, the funny little guy, he was uh, surprised that 
and proud that the upper class would ask him such a question to have interest in his, uh, in his cafeteria or at least his, his part of town. Um, so it was a completely natural reaction to what we presented as real and what felt real to him because uh, maybe you, you're wondering how we recorded this, but we were just sitting inside the bar. Uh, you know, we're not part of this, this thing that we place there. So that's also what we do uh, a lot, is that we hide the fact that we're designers or that we're, we have anything to do with our prototypes, you know. Um, but I think also designing in the field can, can be a, a sort of starting point to validate your assumptions. And in the case of the box, we were wondering also what type of questions would work. So um, if it would be worthwhile going for a certain direction. Um, so yeah, we just faked the way it worked. This is supposed to say rural spark. Um, and Rural Spark is a small startup. It's a Dutch Indian startup that we've uh, been working for for a while, from right from the start. And they have a vision: it's to create uh, smart grids. Um, it's sort of the energy grids of the future. Some areas in the Netherlands they already have it, um, but they wanted to start from scratch. Um, so where where's the best place to go? It's in India, where no one has uh, access to electricity in some parts. Um, and well, this is a bit a complex vision of uh, some things they want to prototype, which is far from reality, but our, uh, they already uh, worked in a certain way and they wanted us to help us with uh, exchanging energy from different sources. Because part of a smart grid is that, uh, for example, there's a football match in town, so they uh, have a demand for energy and there's a hospital next door and they have a surplus of energy, so they exchange energy and they balance energy. So we prepared a lot of ideas and prototypes and we had a lot of assumptions. Um, so we entered a village, um, but this picture is taken uh, I think two weeks, or, uh, maybe three weeks after we first landed in India because the culture is so different. Um, if you make an appointment, you're not sure if the appointment will go through. If you take a train, it's five hours late. Um, there's so many things that you need to worry about. And we're like trying to design a system here based on rules, based on human behavior, based on, uh, well, a certain design language because we also don't speak the language, so, which is actually a plus because um, we let our prototypes speak. We can't influence it with our words. Um, so we had two, we uh, two people prepared for two weeks and then, um, uh, I went together with a colleague and we just sort of relieved them from India, let's go home. If, I mean, if you work for two weeks full time, you're kind of done in India. Um, but um, here we are pitching our product in open space for the, uh, it takes a while for them, but the whole village at certain point is, is just there. Um, and he just, he just received his solar panel. because sometimes I have a really funny job, but um, it's also because we cannot assume anything. I mean, placing the solar panel the wrong way up, that would never happen to me, but so I don't think about it when I design these kind of things. Um, so, you know, you have to get a feel for what questions they ask, what propositions work, and we have to keep on tweaking, you know? Um, so we install a few of them in the area and, and see what happens. This is inside one of their houses. And there's a, um, you couldn't get killed by any of those cables lying around there. Um, and this is uh, behind the scenes. This is our hotel room. Um, 
It's a, I think a one hour drive from the villages that we operate in. Sometimes it's a three hour drive. Um, but our hotel room is like a strategic war room. Um, so there's uh, planning, planning on the side. Uh, we have the whole map figured out, all the stakeholders positions, who would be the, the key uh, people that can make a breakthrough for our design work. Um, so we have a couple of local agents in the field. Um, it's really, uh, you're constantly uh, busy with this system and trying to change it and trying to tweak it and trying to make people do certain things. It's, it's, yeah, it's like playing a game, but then it, uh, these are real people and these are real prototypes, real designs, a real company that's uh, trying to, uh, you know, get, get a lift off in India and uh, yeah, it's really interesting. Um, so to tell you a bit about uh, the project itself, uh, Rural Spark, they, they only work with local energy suppliers, which is really awesome because you go into a village, one person, um, they get a solar panel on the roof and a router inside and they support their own community with light and electricity. So they're also making money from this. So there's a certain intrinsic value for them. Um, and value is not only money because they become their sort of the, the, the social help within a community. Um, so they uh, receive this energy router and it charges 20 lights and they, um, um, and they rent out these uh, lamps at night. And for us it's really interesting because if people spend their money as little as they have on, on this product then you know it's a uh, well taught uh, consideration so uh, you're sure your design motivation is actually working so it's fitting their needs and wishes again um, and after this you know, a couple of weeks we, we figured out that okay now we can scale up to 100 uh, people and I think even Rural Spark is now uh, creating 10,000 kits so that means 10,000 villages so many more people that are uh, now part of a, a smart grid Um, this is the bakery again, but I'm just gonna, you will see some nice pictures. Um, what we think is that products and services are often too complex to design. So in India, this is, this is really clear, but I, I, I think it's the same in your own environment. So what we think is that human behavior um, is really essential in designing these systems. And it, you need to be, well, you can't think them out in, in detail on beforehand, but you can while you are uh, designing them. And while we're, uh, we're big fans of uh, methods like co-design, and we often do this in, in different stages, but we also feel that not everyone is a designer. So you as a creator or an entrepreneur, you have a certain responsibility. You have, to, you have an opinion, you have a direction to go. And um, for us, what is always important to have a certain design goal in mind. For the bakery, this is, uh, we want to, uh, uh, have more profit, but at the same time we don't want to lose our value as, as a bakery, you know, we create nice products, so how can we still do this? And one of the assumptions that you can then have is like, we need to educate people what it, what it means to create a certain bread, what are the ingredients, how do we, how do we create this? So we look for the assumptions behind the radis and we, 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 cert, we develop strategies to, to, to get there. Um, and we what I told you before is that we, we create prototypes, but we also define rules for ourselves. So sometimes we're just standing in the bakery and selling bread to, to just have a feel of what it means to be uh, a baker. Um, but we also have certain, well, you could almost say, spy agents in the field, uh, well, just registering what happens. So the designing for us is also doing, but also reflecting up, upon our actions and the actions of others. So, so we confront people with our prototypes and because we present them as real, um, we also get sincere uh, reactions and interactions. At least that's what we hope. Um, uh, and, and during such a confrontation, we just register everything. Like anything that happens, we monitor it as, as simple as it seems. Um, because you need to be able to uh, define new strategies. For example, in, in, uh, in India, we, 
uh, we needed to make sure they would exchange um, uh, these energy cubes that we had. So we had surplus and we had demand. And how do those people tell others that they have surplus and demand? And how do they exchange these things? So we started a SMS, of a texting uh, service. And we got no replies because it turns out that uh, a lot of people are illiterate, so they can't read their text message. And we figured out that um, uh, they get a lot of spam in their text messages, so they never read their text messages. So we need to improvise. You, need to, you can create it, but at the same time you need to just ditch everything you, you know about this thing and forget about it. Kill your darlings. Um, but I think in whatever profession you work, maybe today uh, you can stop worrying about cutting costs or uh, you know, getting more profit. I want you to, to stop worrying that your IDs are not, uh, are not good enough. And I want you to start being clueless. Like maybe today you have an assignment. Perhaps today you can stop thinking about whatever you know about this uh, thing. Um, just start doing. Uh, ask a lot of questions. Uh, and wonder if things could work in different ways. So be passionately naive and do things today. Thanks.